Luckily, I took the precaution of adding the firing pins from your weapons to my weasel skull necklace as a charm against death by gunfire. Not so lucky for you, eh? Quote, Quinn the Eskimo. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Volume 1, issue 2. Panic at the North Pole. An American research station in the North Pole is raided. All personnel killed and records are missing. General Austin sends the G.I. Joe team to investigate. We better cover ourselves and check it out. Send in the G.I. Joe team. Indeed, I have already taken the liberty of pulling the dozers on the four team members best qualified for this mission. I suspect as much. It's a shame. They're all on leave after their last assignment. In a wooded area somewhere in Wisconsin, a stalker is on a trail of a deer. Suddenly, the peaceful hunt is disrupted as a helicopter flies overhead, startling the deer and causing it to flee. The voice over the chopper's intercom identifies itself as E-5 Lonzo Wilkinson, codename Stalker. General Flag communicates that the mission has been canceled. Frustrated, Stalker responds to General Flag expressing displeasure. General Flag communicates the vacation has been canceled. Frustrated stalker responds to General Flag expressing displeasure. Yeah, I'm about to cancel your face. I've been tracking that stag for six hours. In the computer lab at MIT, two girls express admiration for G.I. Joe. They finally referred to as Breaker. They note that he's a government operative who visits the labs approximately every month. When he arrives, he engages with the computers, displaying a playful and enthusiastic demeanor according to the observation of the girls. Just as the girls formally a plan to have coffee with Breaker, he disappears. On the computer, there's ins instructions to report to someone named Flag. At the San Diego Civic Arena during a martial arts tournament freestyle, Scarlet finds herself engaged in a battle with a formidable competitor. Suddenly, a soldier approaches, conveying a message that Flag requires Scarlet's presence and requests her immediate return to the duty station. Swiftly, Scarlet exits the ongoing match, prompting the other women to give chase in pursuit of Scarlet. However, Scarlet reacts decisively as the pursuing woman attempts to attack her from behind. With swift and precise movement, Scarlet seizes control, executing a skillful counter move. She then leaps into the air, delivering a powerful face kick directly to her adversary's face. In the basement of a Columbia University, two researchers are conducting special training with snake eyes. The general overseeing the operations issues an order for one of the researchers to open the isolation tank. To their shock, a hideous face is revealed inside. Reacting swiftly, snake eyes puts on on his mask. Following this unsettling revelation, Snake Eyes is promptly commanded to catch a plane, further intensifying the mysterious and urgent nature of the situation. Later, over the Arctic, emphasis is placed on the nature of the mission, specifically a reconnaissance mission. The director is clear. The primary objective is observation, and under no circumstances are they to initiate contact with the opposition. In the event of being fired upon, the order is to withdraw in an orderly manner and subsequently contact the command center for further instruction. Breaker has been equipped with new communication rig featuring the capability to both send and receive telepresence relay visual intelligence. The director is clear. Gather new data and will be promptly forward as needed. Additionally, his secondary mission involves the retrieval of mission records from a research station. The imperative is to secure these records by any means necessary without compromising the primary mission. In other words, the emphasis is on executing the secondary task discreetly to avoid detection or getting caught. The Joes leap from the airplane, each deploying their parachutes skillfully. Swiftly, they conceal their parachutes and embark on a land track moving directly across the terrain. After a strategic advance, they establish a camp to observe and gather intelligence on the unfolding events. The team observes a nearby Russian installation since they cannot initiate contact with them. An Eskimo arrives with a machine gun and goes inside the research station for a minute, then leaves with the door open. The Joes enter the station and find the researchers dead, research wretches taken, an ultra-low frequency transmitter capable of affecting human brainwaves missing a key part. They barely escape after Snake Eyes spots a planted explosive. The Joes have deduced that the Eskimo is skilled and likely collaborating with the Russians. Recognizing the possibility of a submarine extraction, they conclude that he is heading for the coast. Armed with a film of the Eskimo, their plan is to send it to General Flag for identification. However, they opt to break camp and pursue him directly directly, demonstrating their urgency and determination to apprehend the mysterious operative. Scarlet expresses doubt, stating we'll never catch up to him. He's got a dog sled and we're, and we're walking. Stalker counters with determination, asserting we're not walking, we're running. And he doesn't 
know somebody's following him. This exchange highlights the Joe's commitment and strategy in their pursuit of the elusive target. Breaker receives a message via the teleprinter, and it's from General Flag. The message reveals the identity of the Eskimo. His name is Quinn, a mercenary possessing expertise in tracking, hunting, and woodsmanship. Additionally, Quinn is known to be multilingual. His personality profile describes him as an individual who never lies, diligently fulfills contracts and obligations to the letter, and steadfastly refuses to disclose any information about former employees or, or operations, regardless of the circumstances. In essence, Quinn is characterized as a soldier with a strong sense of honor. Scarlet says, pew, this guy has all the earmarks of that most dreaded of all antagonists, the highly motivated individual. Stalker says, it's almost dark, or as dark as it can get up here at this time of year. Quinn will have to camp soon. If we double time it all the way, we might catch up to him before he starts up again. Five hours later, the Joe successfully catch up to Quinn, discovering him near a campfire beside a crashed plane. To their surprise, Quinn's file did not indicate the presence of a pilot or navigation. However, as Snake Eyes moves to approach Quinn with a gun, a shocking revelation unfolds. The supposed firearm is in fact C4 plastic explosive. The Eskimo skillfully breaks down the airplane door and reveals a failsafe remote detonator. He warns the Joes that releasing his grip on it would result in a 50-foot crater where they currently stand. Advising them to drop their weapons, he emphasized the futility. In response, the Joes comply and relinquish their weapons, recognizing the gravity of the situation. Quinn remarks, it's ironic that you fear makes you comply. He proceeds to unveil a starting revelation, disclosing the Russians were using their research station to transmit low-frequency fear waves at the U.S. as part of an experiment to induce mass paranoia. Quinn instructs the Joes to put their packs on the sled, explaining that the sled is equipped with transmitters. These transmitters inadvertently affected the Russian crew, causing them to become highly paranoid. Quinn continues, revealing that he has, was hired to retrieve the American records and the Russian frequency modulator, all while eliminating every any evidence of the experiment. He clarifies that the crew of the plane is awaiting him at the base camp by the sea where a submarine will pick them up precisely at noon tomorrow. Quinn asserts the Russians are quite punctual, never early, never late, always right on the button. Scarlet puzzled questions him, asking, why are you telling us all this? According to your dossier, you'll never divulge one iota of information to a single person. Turning to Snake Eyes, she inquires, what are you trying to say? The unfolding dialogue underscores Scarlet's skepticism and the mysterious nature of Quinn's unexpected disclosure. Quinn calls Snake Eyes the Shadow Man, describes Snake Eyes with the eyes of a shaman claiming to see the spirits of snow and ice staring at his soul like a hungry bear. He justifies revealing his secret, stating, I tell you my secrets because you are dead men. You have no supplies, no radio. Farewell. Breaker concurs with Quinn, acknowledging he's right, we've had it. Scarlet senses the urgency, expressing that if they start back immediately, there might be a chance of making it back to the American research station. The exchange emphasized the dire situation and the slim possibility of survival. Stalker asserts, no, we go after him. This is what we have to do. His statement underscores a determined commitment to pursue Quinn, highlighting the team's resolve in the face of adversity. Refusing to give up, Stalker takes charge and directs his team to strip whatever useful material they can salvage from the broken down plane that brought Quinn to the Arctic. This decision reflects Stalker's determination to make the most of their situation and resources in the challenging circumstances as they face. They ingeniously cobble together an ice sailboat and manage to outpace Quinn's dog sled. This innovative solution showcases the resoluteness and adaptability of Stalker's team as they strive to catch up with their elusive target. The Joes strategically set up an explosive trap in the ice bridge, demonstrating their tactical prowess as they anticipate Quinn's movements in their pursuit. However, Quinn cunningly employs his dog sled as a decoy, diverting attention away from his true path and impending explosive trap set by the Joes. The Joes anticipating Quinn's move, remove ice from a decoy sled to give him a false sense of advantage. However, the Joes have prepared for this, and Scarlet skillfully drops from an even higher ground, surprising Quinn and confronting him directly. Quinn, a formidable mercenary, withstands the attack and retaliates by throwing Scarlet down. Seizing the moment, Snake Eyes acts swiftly, grabbing a machine gun and loading with ammunition, believing he now has the upper hand in the confrontation. Once again, outsmarting the Joes, Quinn removes all the firing pins from their guns, incorporating them into his weasel skull as a peculiar form of good luck. He asserts that the Joes are not as fortunate, underscoring his belief in his own strategic advantage. Quinn somberly declares, soon the 
spirits of snow and ice will devour your souls. That is sad, for you are brave fighters. Expressing regret, he reflects on his assignment from the Russians, acknowledging that tampering with fear is greater threat than the harsh elements of snow and ice. Quinn describes the frequency manager as a concentrated nugget of fear, waiting to spread distrust and loathing worldwide. Detesting the Russians' use of fear waves, he reveals a belief that the only way to neutralize the threat is to entrust it to the Joes. Scarlet urgently implores, don't do it, but Quinn, motivated by a sense of honor, steadfastly adheres to the principle that a contract must be honored to the letter. Despite his unwavering commitment, he reflects on whether there might have been an alternative solution to the predicament at hand. Quinn meets with his Russian contacts, delivering both the records and the frequency modular as per the terms of his assignment. After handing over the records and the frequency modulator, Quinn swiftly packs up and begins to depart. This action frustrates the Russians who discover that the Joe team is en route, intensifying the tension of the situation. The Russian insists, why must you stay here and protect us until the submarine arrives? You have a contract with us. Quinn firmly responds, my contract was fulfilled. This job is ended. The Russian expressed concern, stating that they believe Quinn has aided the Americans in betraying them. Quinn counters asserting, I have done nothing but hinder them in every possible way. I left them five miles from here, no firing pins in their weapons. However, I stopped one mile from here and left my weasel skull necklace in a cairn as an offering to the spirits of ice and snow, hoping that the fear might vanish from the world. Perhaps if you found my Karen before they did, you might dispel my prayer. They are four miles from it to your one. This dialogue encapsulates the complex dynamics and motivations at play in this situation. Realizing their only chance to locate the items before the Russians, Quinn underestimates the Russians' ability to find the skull necklace and firing pins. The Joes, confident in their tracking skills, successfully find the necklace with the pins. Now they are prepared to handle the Russians and fulfill their mission. Next issue, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, Volume 1, Issue 3, The Trojan Gambit.